A scope box allows you to have control over which datums are visible in a given view. This can be more effective than hiding individual levels or grids repeatedly in various views. You may find this useful when the extents or the layout of a building model vary across floor plate or height. An example would be an urban multi-story building where the lower levels, or podium, require a very different grid layout than the upper levels, or tower, of the building, similar to what we see here. Although you must create scope boxes in a plan view, once created, you can modify their extents in any model view, including a 3D view. Datum elements may be assigned to a scope box, and the visibility of those datum elements that are managed by each scope box may be configured per view. I will begin by placing a scope box in the Level 1 plan view. On the View ribbon, in the Create panel, click Scope Box. In the Options bar, you can specify a name and height for the scope box. These can be adjusted later from the Properties palette. For this example, I will name the first scope box Building Datum and the height will be 180 feet or 55 meters. Then, I will pick the opposite corners of the scope box so that it is larger than the actual building and surrounds all of the elevation view callouts. Once the scope box has been created, pay attention to the grips for adjusting the scope box extents and also the rotate control in the upper right corner. Next, I want to select all of the grids. To do this, I'll use a crossing window to select everything. Then, in the ribbon, I'll click Filter to open the Filter dialog. Since I used a crossing window, everything is selected. I'll click Check None to deselect everything, and then select just the grids, and then click OK. Now that only grids are selected, in the Properties palette, I'll change the scope box assignment from None to Building Datum, the name of the scope box I just created, and then click Apply. Notice that the extents of the grids automatically adjust in the plan view and are all nice and neatly aligned. To ensure that these podium grids do not appear on the upper stories, we must create a duplicate of this scope box and change the overall height. I'll select the scope box and then on the Modify Scope Boxes contextual ribbon in the clipboard panel, I'll click Copy to Clipboard to copy the scope box to the clipboard. Then I'll expand the Paste Split button and choose Align to Same Place. With the new scope box selected, in the Properties palette, I'll change the name of the scope box to Podium Datum and then click Apply. Next, I'll open the South Elevation view by double-clicking on it in the Project Browser. Be aware that the Podium Datum scope box is still selected. Now I can use the grips to adjust the extents of the scope box so that its overall height is approximately midway between levels 3 and 4. Then, I'll switch back to the Level 1 floor plan view. Click in blank space to deselect the scope box. Then I'll press the control key and select grid lines TA, TB, and 6. Then in the properties palette, I will assign those grid lines to the podium datum scope box and click apply. These grids will now no longer appear on floors above level 3. I'll double click in the project browser to open the level 4 floor plan view. Note that this view has been rotated to orient it with the tower grids. Now I'll create a third scope box. On the view ribbon, in the create panel, I'll click scope box. In the options bar, I'll name this new scope box tower datum and set its height to 140 feet or 43 meters. Then, I'll specify the opposite corners of the scope box so that it is more closely cropped to the tower 
being careful not to crop out the elevation callouts associated with the tower. Once again, click in blank space to deselect the scope box. Then, in the Quick Access Toolbar, I'll click Close Hidden Windows. Then, I'll use the Project Browser to open the Level 1, Level 15, and Roof floor plan views, and then type the keyboard shortcut WT to tile my views, and then type ZA to zoom all of the windows to fit. Next, I'll set the properties for my upper story views. I don't intend to assign grids or levels to this scope box, but rather will set the view properties to take advantage of some special functionality. Press the control key and then in the project browser, select the level 4, level 15, and roof floor plan views. Then in the properties palette, under extents, change the scope box to tower datum and click apply. Once I do, the view is now cropped to the scope box. In the level 15 and roof plan views, the same crop is assigned. Also, all of these views have rotated to the same orientation. This is controlled by the orientation view parameter. A scope box assignment overrides the manual rotation of the level 4 floor plan view, the project north or the true north setting, which was previously assigned to the other selected views. When I switch to the 3D view, you can see the individual scope boxes as they relate to the building geometry and layout. And when I select a scope box, grips for changing its extents become available.